Hey everybody, Josh Wingler back with you with another video. Sorry, it's been a few weeks. Uh, been uh, dealing with some health shit. Um, spent a, a week in the hospital last week, or two weeks ago, something like that. Um, I guess it was last weekend. Anyway, uh, I'm back at it, back out in the shop, getting things rolling again. Um, finally getting things all together out here. Uh, gonna do, do a little uh, rundown of what all the upgrades were to the, the Sieg, uh, uh, the Sieg KX3. Uh, a lot of guys have converted the X3 into the, what they call the SX3, the Super X3, um, the CNC version. Um, basically, they take the manual and they convert it to CNC. This baby was sold by Little Machine Shops, where I bought it from. Harbor Freight actually sold it um, off their website for a while. Um, I bought it because it would fit through a 36-inch door, and I was in an apartment at the time. Um, I bought it, picked it up, had it delivered to a buddy's shop. Uh, shout out DC Racing Engines here in town. Uh, Ricky helped me load it in the back of the minivan on a little Harbor Freight shop dolly, got it home, rolled it down the ramp of my minivan into the elevator up to the shop. Um, getting it up on the table is another whole story. Um, had some decent tables um, that I was that I did have sitting on, but after a couple of years, getting pretty bowed down in the middle and kept adjusting the legs to keep it level. And finally, uh, just picked up some steel now that I have a MIG welder. Um, got some 2 by 3 steel and built a nice sturdy stand for it that also takes up a lot less space. Um, sheet metal pan for the um, you know bottom of the enclosure and the back of the enclosure. Um, quarter inch plexiglass for the, the doors and the sides. Um, not the most safety conscious thing, but Lexan is expensive and I, I store safety glasses. I'll take my chances that a piece of this gets sheared off sometime when a part comes out. And, um, the problem with the plexiglass is they can break, the acrylic can break and get sharp. Um, and then you can see right here, I have a little pool rack that I built on the side. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on this black plastic shit that I used. It's called, I think, Starboard. Um, bought it on Amazon, and it was great to work with. Um, a lot of times plastics melt and are really hard to work with. This stuff sanded great, cut great, drilled great. Um, I'm actually going to make a second rack for up higher because um, I have more tools that I want to have. Um, so so that would be another video. I've um, got two switches down here. Uh, you can kind of see um, bottom one. That's my wall mounted shop back. Um, I got the hose right here. I can grab that, pull that, suck out chips. Um, I have a little, uh, uh, I can't think what they're called. It's like the Tornado, um, but it's the, a shittier version for, works good for the metal chips. Um, wood chips, they don't really suck right through it, but metal chips works great. Um, sometimes I'll shoot a video on that too, it's stuck in the corner. And then uh, the top one is the actual power for the mill. Um, I got uh, a wireless keyboard now, which is nice because I can roll around. Um, but with the enclosure, I've got metal chips getting in the keyboard all the time. Um, I had a seal shield keyboard before to keep chips out. Um, but honestly, keyboards are cheap enough now that if I go through two a year, I'll just pitch them and buy a new one. Um, the actual mill, I'll pop open the doors so they're a little, little dirtier. Um, both doors open right up. Um, trying to see, you see the, yeah. So right down here, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm sticking my finger through a little thing. This is the Tormach tool tightener. Um, for the ER collets, it's a one-way bearing. It spins freely one way, it doesn't spin the other way. I debated whether I was buying one or not. They're only like 15 bucks, they're cheap. They're awesome. The, the kick ass to be able to mount up tools. I mount them up, then I measure them and set my offsets. It's, it's great. Um, that's the biggest upgrade I actually honestly did was the Tormach tooling system. Um, so, I'm trying to see again if in the video you can see. I just have a little lever valve right over here. Um, it's just a manually operated, uh, manually operated uh, air valve. Um, with lines that run, you can kind of see where the lines run up through the front here. They go up to a piston up top. Um, I'll do a cutaway to that piston up top and describe how that works here in just a second. Uh, but reach in here. This isn't quite as good as an automatic tool chaser. But I hit the lever, give it just a second because my air compressor barely puts out enough pressure to uh, actually run the release. Uh-oh, okay, there it goes. Bam, comes down and out. When I want to put it back in, 
and I've got a little oil in the mouth. Um, I slide it back up in, make sure to hold it up tight. Take the valve back, locked in. That thing's got about 2,200 pounds of force pulling up on the collet. Nice and solid, haven't had one pull loose. Um, love, love, love this Tormark tooling system. I, I debated about actually buying a Tormark. I debated about selling this and buying one of the Tormark uh, 440s or 770s. And quite honestly, I just couldn't justify the price. What, what I had works. I just needed to make a better stand for it. The Tormark stand wouldn't work for me anyway. So I needed to make my own stand no matter what. I already owned this one. I already understood this one. Parts are still available for this one. So I might as well keep this one. Um, total into this whole machine with all the upgrades I've done, I'm under 10 grand with all my tooling and everything. In order to buy a Tormach with everything, I wanted the automatic tooling changer and all that. I was looking at $20,000. For $20,000, I can go out and buy myself a used Haas mini mill. Can't do it underneath the damn thing, but you know, it, I don't know, I just I couldn't quite bring myself to, to justify financing something that I didn't really need. This one did the job just fine. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that I rated the, the vice. This is a Char's, uh, what is it, a 440V is the model. It's a five inch, um, they make, you, you can buy the, the replacement soft jaws from them, you can buy a little bit more steel out of jaws from them. Um, I. I had an HH, HHIP, something like that. It wasn't a lockdown device, so I'm, I'm not going to totally rip that company because I, I've only used one of their vices. It will work decent on a drill press. It's a piece of shit for a vice, for a, for a mill. Um, I piece of shit for a mill. Um, this one here cost me, I want to say four or five hundred bucks, um, and then I had to mount it sideways because it was too big for the, the mill bed. Um, but what I did is here on the end, I have a, um, a air ratchet from Harbor Freight, one of their little stubby guys. And I'll swing the camera around in a minute and show. Uh, but I have a extension on the, the forward reverse switch that I built. And it just sticks over the uh, end of the vise and opens and closes the jaw. Once it locks down, Give it a little extra push on whatever part I'm doing. Suck it right down tight in the vise. Works great. This thing, this thing was a, a, a great little idea. I didn't know what I was going to do. I looked at the butterfly style and stuff. This thing just kick ass. Um, did have to take it apart and rotate it so the handle pushes kind of down and in rather than straight back and out. Um, the little lever actuator here, but. Um, yeah, that was minor. I mean, it was it was it was super easy. It's pretty intuitive what you have to do on those. Um, and it's hard to frick one. I think I paid fifteen dollars for it. If I broke the damn thing, I'd throw it out by anyone. Yeah, so you can see it there. That's the uh, ratchet on the end of the vise. It uh, I just hard lined it into my airlines that run behind the mill, and you just hit the lever and go. Um, got a set screw on there just to help hold it onto the end of the shaft and. Works great. Um, it, it's really hard to spin the vise, you know, to open and close, uh, especially with it mounted on the sideways position there. But but this has worked great so far, and uh, super happy with both the vise and the uh, the little mini ratchet. Uh, let's see what else we got upgrades. We got the uh, oil mister system. Um, you can see the oil and air come together up here. Um, this is a homemade job. Um, I have the it's it, YouTube it. There's lots of people have done them. Um, some have been more successful than others. I'm not going to claim the mine's the best. It gets the job done. It's not full flood coolant, but it clears chips away with the air and the oil lubricates the, uh, the tools. Um, we actually have other people, what, what people use in their systems. I'm just using um, just 5W30 motor oil. Um, but I'd be interested to see what other people use. I've had real good luck over on the lathe um, cutting aluminum with a mixture of uh, aluminum tap magic and WD-40. Um, too much WD-40, it smokes too much, um, but it, that combination brushed on really is working well on the little lathe. So, if you're interested to know if people are spraying out of their systems, you know, leave comments below if you have some ideas on, on what works better. Um, mainly cutting aluminum here. Um, so I'm not really interested, I don't really care what steel, titanium, any of that. I'm cutting aluminum. So what works good for aluminum uh, would be good to know. Um, let's see what else have we got we done. Um, that's almost it on the it's got a one-shot oiler system on it. 
and it's been a bitch since day one to pull that lever because it's way back towards the back and my arm barely reaches long enough and get oil all down my arm because you had to reach underneath the ways here. Um, you grab this little lever now, get a little pull, it's got a little cable on there. Um, the cable is something about on Amazon for like three bucks. Um, just a piece of aluminum I had around that I just cut a notch in with a slitting saw, a little piece of angle iron down here, bam, pull that once or twice while I'm milling, lubricates the whole system. Part of this whole upgrade started because I had a kinked oil line on my Z-axis on my oiling system and I had to replace that. So that's what started tearing down a lot of this mill and rebuilding the whole thing. Um, but now it is it is back, back going good. Um, things are working great. Um, couldn't, couldn't be happier with, with what I ended up with. I understand I'm fighting this door. I've got to put a little catch on the door. It bounces off my sheet metal shear over here. Um, let's see, anything else I want to show you? Um, I, I think that's basically it. Um, I'm going to actually cut away now and uh, raise the camera up and show the exact mechanism, um, how, how the actual mechanism up on the, uh, for the Tornock tooling system, how I built that and what that setup is. Um, I've had a couple people that are interested in building similar systems and wondering what I did. So I'm going to cut away now and I'll give a little more detail on, on that system. Um, but then, uh, you know, check back on the next videos. Thanks. Okay, so here's a closer view of the actual mechanism of the uh, release for the Tormark tooling system. Uh, what you see there on top is a 5 inch piston uh, pneumatic ram with a half inch of travel. Uh, you don't need much travel out of these. Pick this one up on eBay for 42 bucks used. Um, built a little bracket on the bottom. Um, and then what you, you may not be able to see there is there's just a small gap between the top of the uh, 716 bolt that goes down to the collet um, and the actual piston itself. So the spindle f spins completely freely uh, from the piston. Um, the spindle doesn't contact the, the pneumatic ram at all. Um, there's a little shaft collar on the top followed by two nuts. Uh, those nuts are used to set the preload and then lock it. Um, below that are six um, Belleville washers. Uh, I'll put a link below to the ones I use. Uh, they have about a 2,000 pound working load, so that means that you get about 2,000 pounds of load um, pulling up on the um, on the drawbar all the time um, when, when it's engaged. Um, when I hit the release, you'll see the piston come down. And what you may notice there is all three bolts around uh, around the, those Belleville washers pull up a little bit. Those go through a round plate with a hole in it that then pulls up on the bottom of a collar I put on the outside of the spindle. Um, you don't want to actually push that 2,000 pounds of load down on your spindle bearings. So that allows it to just float freely. So when the spindle's spinning, that plate just hovers just below that shaft collar. And when you engage it, it pulls up pulls up against the bottom of that shaft collar, pushes down enough that it'll release the, uh, the tool. Um, that took a little bit of figuring and a little bit of um, working. Yeah, we had to keep working the, the three bolts to get it so it just cleared enough that uh, we didn't have to worry about it hitting, but with only a half inch of travel, that it also you know easily engaged. So you see it goes up, pushes down the Belleville washers just slightly. I'm actually purposely not letting it go quite enough to release the tool because my tripod's in the way of me catching the tool and I don't want it to drop, I don't want my, uh, my, my uh, Jacob's shot to drop down onto my vise. So I'm purposely not letting it put quite enough pressure on there to release the tool. Uh, simple enough setup, the Belleville washers, you can stack them two different ways. If you stack them, so what, what we actually have there is um, concave, convex, concave, convex, concave, convex. So they're actually all acting singularly. They're not in series. Um, they're, they're, they're in parallel. So you can stack them the other way and actually they'll, the forces will add. So each one will add another 2,000 pounds of load you need. Um, I stacked them this way because uh, one, 
Um, my air compressor regulator that I have on right now kicks out at 125 PSI. So that was the maximum load I could have and I can only make about 2,500 PSI with this piston. And uh, our, our about 100, our, uh, excuse me, about 2,500 pounds of force with 125 PSI with a five inch piston. Um, it's around 2,500 pounds of force. I actually originally was hoping to get about 3,000. Um, that didn't end up happening. Um, but this setup works. I haven't had any slippage of tools, so I'm um, totally, totally happy with it. Um, I wish I had more pictures of what's down inside of there with the shaft collar and the, the collar that those three bolts go through. Um, if anybody really wonders, I'll try to draw it up in CAD, but um, it's pretty simple. Um, if you look around at some other guys that have done this, Haas Machine, um, shout out to Haas Machine. Um, I'm pointing up the corner here, you can't see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a tag in here. Um, he, he details pretty well how he did his setup, and uh, Haas is an H-O-S-S, not H-A-S-S. Um, he did a full CNC conversion of a machine, and it really goes into detail, and you can buy his plans off his website and stuff. So um, uh, let's give a little shout out to him, because that's where I learned a lot about how to do my setup. Um, super stoked with it, really happy. Um, eventually, I could hook it up to a electronic release. I could build my own tool changer. I could do a lot of things with this. Um, it beats the hell out of putting every tool into a collet, measuring offsets, and all that shit. Um, I, I really wish I'd done this upgrade a while ago. Um, that's probably the biggest upgrade that I'm secondary to the vice. The vice work holding, I realize, has been my biggest flaw in all my machining up till now. Um, so, so secondary to the vice would be the, uh, the Tormach tooling system. There's knockoffs on the market of the, the tool holders. Um, Quite honestly, I don't think they're worth the money because the Tormach ones ain't that expensive. Uh, you can buy from Tormach, you can buy from a little machine shop. Um, they're available in lots of places. And uh, yeah, super, super stoked. They work great for what I do. Um, this isn't some um, you know, super, super precision setup here. Um, it's, it's pretty basic, but it works. And uh, for the money I have into this machine, I can build some badass parts um, and, and repetitively build them. So